with another video. So we got the XB for the 23 all built. Um, so let's chat about some of the differences and what we noticed from the old 21 car to the new 23. So if you have a 22, um, some of this isn't going to apply because they did some of these in run changes to the 22 uh, car versus the 23 or the 21. So uh, we'll just chat about what's different between the 21 to the 23 because that's obviously what I upgraded from. So first things first, we got uh, a new body shell. So it's pretty much the same gamma on the top here, but essentially what changes quite drastically is these two side dams in the nose here. So they really taper off. Uh, and then you're also gonna get that same tapering in the back just because they do notch that chassis. And that was the big change on the, uh, the 23 car. So if you try to put this body on the 21, it actually doesn't really fit all that great. So there's pretty much your difference in what they change on the front two parts of the chassis. And they also change a little bit on the rear end as well. So that's one big change. So new shell, obviously we chatted about the new chassis uh, and to get a better idea of how that looks, we'll line up the D blocks here on the rear end of the car. It's kind of a tricky situation because you have C hubs and steering knuckles and a bunch of other stuff. But uh, so if we line this up, nose to nose, tail to tail, and you give it a flip. There's again your difference in the chassis there in the nose. And like I said, they also do that in the tail as well. So just knock that corner edge off. So quite a big difference as you can tell, I kept this one a little bit dirty uh, and you can see the uh, Velcro is actually starting to peel up on the edges there of that chassis. Dirt and debris on our track with our jumps uh, here at our local facility, uh, just pack in there and it causes a big, big, big mess when it comes to cleaning. So other thing that changes with that chassis is now you're gonna have a multitude of different positions that you can actually move your battery forward or backwards. So on this car, there's gonna be three positions in the front and four in the back. If you run a different style shorty uh, and you can need to kind of pinch it in, you can do that. On the old car, there was zero positions of movement. So you're stuck. Um, this one also has four different O-rings that you can put on the rear post. So it actually changes how much uh, play you have in between the batteries. So that's one thing there. Um, they also changed the drive shafts. So instead of the universal style, like what's on this car, you can see there's a universal joint on the back edge and the front edge on the pinion. On the new car, you're actually getting dog bones. So now you're getting this style. And the nice part is they do have an O-ring and you put them on the diff end. So it does take up some of that play. Other differences, how far forward the weight is now. So the center rear drive shaft on the new car is 117 millimeters long. The old car is 111. So they actually move that weight forward by six millimeters. Uh, and your front drive shaft also changes a little bit in length. The old one was 65 or the new one 65, sorry. And the old one is 79. So they kind of shifted everything forward a little bit. The other difference that uh, I found uh, was the motor mount. So the motor mount is a lot more low slung in the new car, way less material, so a little bit lighter. And this eccentric piece as well that the motor mounts to on the inside is also smaller. So it looks like they're trying to save some weight from the middle of the car here. So that changes. The other thing that changes, which we did talk about in our unboxing video, is going to be the servo mount. So the old car had this big servo mount and it had a big brace down the middle. It also mounts to the side guard as well. So with that, you get three screws in down the middle of the chassis and one in the side guard that holds it together. The new car, you still get two positions, but the nice part is it is only two screws. That is it, that is all. So they saved a whole pile of weight there uh, by doing just the two screw mount. So that was one thing. Another thing talking about drive train is the spur and the ring and the pinions are exactly the same. Nothing changed tooth count or gear ratio wise, but the rear drive shafts did change. So now if you wanted to run your 21 in the short arm position, it was kind of tricky to get your track width exactly the same, especially pushing out those inserts far out because what happens as the drive shaft and the arms droop uh, is you don't really have much plunge. So don't really have much drive shaft actually engaged in the cup because what this was is a 75 millimeter rear universal where the new car is now coming with a 77. So an extra two mil, if you want to run the short arms, just getting a little bit more drive shaft in the cup. 
and it still doesn't bottom out under plunge. So that is the best part about the new car. They fix that issue if you do want to run the short arms. Uh, this car, or I guess both these cars are running the short arm currently. So you do need to push your pills out a little bit further just to maintain that track width. So the front and the rear are very, very similar. Um, that was pretty much about the only things that I found was really different. Uh, everything when we started talking about shock towers, bulkheads, all of that good stuff was all the same. But now you can see this car kind of fully decked out. So some of the stuff that we did uh, to this car for just myself uh, is we went with the X-Ray 9720-30 O-rings in here. So the 3x2 versus this factory 3x2.1. So a little bit uh, freer shock there uh, and the shaft just moves a little bit freer. Other thing that we changed on this car versus the other car was I went with the two pill, or I guess two position uh, rear links on the hubs. So you have one on the inside, one on the outside. This isn't quite the same as the factory one. The inner position is actually further in. So in this case, further out on the hub. And this position is also further in towards the center line of the chassis. So something you gotta remember if you do change to this optional part is you will have to reset your camber uh, and it will change your camber gains just because that link length is going to be different. Another thing we did on this car was the optional Ackerman plate. Instead of the graphite one that it comes with, we did go with the aluminum one. We find it takes out a little bit of play and it is a, a really nice little touch. Uh, adds a little pizzazz to it. Um, and that was really the only thing we changed other than going to the 40 tooth, uh, or sorry, 41 tooth uh, ring gear off of the 40 tooth to underdrive the rear end a little bit, locks it in a little bit more and uh, tames it down. So that is the differences between this XB4 21 versus the brand spank new 23. There really wasn't as much changes to the 22 to the 23 other than your chassis. Um, you're gonna get uh, the little bit of the different body, obviously, and the mud guards. But a lot of the 22 stuff was this. So you got the dog bones, you got the different length dog bones, so you could offset your weight. But the biggest thing is just not digging your chassis into the ground. So really, really excited to get it going this weekend. Uh, we have a big race out in Dundurn, uh, and it's gonna be a trophy weekend. So why not start with a brand new car, right? It's the worst that's gonna happen. Thanks to Hicks for pounding me out a quick body. Um, he painted that in like two hours. So um, better than nothing, because the old bodies, if you try to put them on, obviously with the difference in this front clip here, uh, it's like way overhanging and I could stick my finger in there and it was just uh, gonna be a complete mess when we start talking about mud and things like that. So hopefully it goes well, we'll see what happens. I'm really excited to try the new 23 chassis out and uh, see what the difference is on how it feels. But thank you so much everyone for watching, really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you have any more questions about this car. Uh, and yeah, we'll be happy to answer them. So hopefully everyone has a great day. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.